Hello, it's Nathan Wrigley here from WP Builds. We've got a contribute episode coming up and today from Dakar in Bangladesh, we've got Shakawat Sultan and he's come to show us something I've literally never seen being used in WordPress before. So hello there, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm really good. This is very exciting. We've had, before this all started, we had about an, half an hour of just technology <laughs> catastrophes, but we finally made it. Yeah. And uh, we're yeah. going to see something all about uh, about VR in WordPress. I'm going to tell you the URLs before we begin. There's a free mm -hmm. version over at the WP.org uh, repo, uh, and it's called WP Space VR. Um, and there's a pro version, which is the URL's a little bit longer. It's rextheme.com forward slash a whole load of other stuff. But instead of trying to say all of that, I'm going to just put it in the show notes <laughs> and you'll be able to find it. So, yeah, Sultan, if you want to um, share your screen and show us how this thing works and what it is and what it does, that would be remarkable. All right. So uh, basically, this this plugin is just called WPVR with the mindset of uh, integrating virtual reality with WordPress. So uh, this plugin will just uh, allow anybody to create a virtual tour, literally a virtual tour where you can move about the place. All right. So I'll just show you uh, the plugin interface. If you go, you'll see uh, it's the last plugin you'll get there because there's hardly any plugin with name starting after W. Right? Yes, good point. So, <laughs> right. so once you go there, you have three options, get started, tours, add new tours. So uh, on the get started, we gave all the options where you can actually you know, get the documentations. We have pretty detailed documentation so that you don't get confused. Uh, then uh, let me just show you how you can actually create a tour really quick. All right. Okay. So you have this option called add new tour. Once you go there, uh, it'll take you to the main page. So the first thing you got to do is give it a title. So let me just give it a title, Nathan. Show. Sure. So okay. uh, if I look at below, you have three options, general, scene, and hotspot. So the general settings is just for general, you know. So auto load, it's something which allow you to uh, make it possible for the tour to load automatically or allow the customer to click to see it, all right, or wh whoever views it. And for show controls, this is just to uh, have manual controls on the virtual tour itself. Uh, you'll see that once we create the tour. Okay. Scene fade duration is for when we have multiple scenes and you're trying to move from one place to another. Uh, it creates a faded effect to move into the other scene. So this is calculated in milliseconds. So we usually put it at 1,000 to make it at one second scene fade duration. Okay. Now, the next step to do is go to scenes. And here you see there are only a few options here. First thing you need to do is assign this scene a scene ID. So I'll just give it a name, say scene 01. And you see the scene type, this is the only type we do, so we don't have any options. It's called equi-rectangular. And uh, you see the option called set as default. This is so that you can select the scene which you want to be viewed at first whenever someone enters a virtual tour. Okay. Right? So the next thing you do is you upload uh, 360 panoramic image. So I have one right here. So once I select it, it'll give me a thumbnail here so, so that you know it's uploaded. And if I click on this preview, just below that, you'll see I have a preview. Now I can already move about this tour nice. in my preview. See? Yeah. And uh, using my keyboard, I can move up and down, left and right. I can use the mouse. It, it's all possible in anything. In your uh, smartphone, you can actually touch the screen to move it. And uh, I can zoom in and zoom out with the mouse wheel or plus and minus, whichever is suitable for you. All right. Now, this is just uh, one scene. I have just inputted the image. I haven't input any other data, right? Yeah. Now, how do I do everything else? If you see on the setup below the scenes, you get hotspot. Now, this is the thing that we use to integrate any other stuff, such as giving information. Uh, you might have the question when the image came up, what is this icon? This is basically an icon of a hotspot, which is default built uh, when you create a scene. You okay. can delete it if you don't want any hotspots. Okay. But in, in case you want a hotspot, you got to name it. So I'll just name it H01 for now. And you see this gives options called Peach and Yaw, which is pretty confusing for most, but it's actually not. If you look at the preview, just below the preview, you can see Peach and Yaw given there. Okay. So let's say I want a hotspot right over here on, on this boat. 
So when I clicked on it, you see the pitch and the yaw actually got updated. Got so it. This is the coordinates for that specific point that I clicked on. Now, what I need to do is I need to copy this too. And I need to input the data, just the numbers, in place of the pitch and the yaw. Make sure there's no work. stray spaces in there. Got it. Right. So no spaces and uh, no letters. Yep. All right. So once I do that, now if I click on preview now, you see the icon is gone from here and now the icon is over here. Yay! Right? <laughs> so now on this icon, we can input a lot of information. For example, if I just want uh, some information to come up when I just put the mouse on top of it, let's say I'm writing a hello. So I click on preview. Now let's see, I'm just putting the mouse on top of it. I'm not clicking on it yep. and it's saying me yep. hello. Right? Yeah. And that's on hover content. And if I want an on click content, we made it into an HTML base. So you got to use the P tags for it to be uh, properly organized. So okay. I'm just inputting some information. Hello, how are you? So now this is an on-click content. So when I click on that icon, it will give me a pop-up like this. Nice. Give me the information. Right. And in this similar way, we can actually input images or we can also input videos. We just have to use the HTML tags, image source, or for the video, we just directly paste the iframe in this place. And okay. it will just give me the same pop-up screen with the image or the video. So it could be right. like a YouTube um, embed URL, um, so long yeah. as it's got an iframe surrounding it. Okay. Right. Well, how about I just show it to yeah, you? Yeah, why not? Let's bang, bang a YouTube video in there. All right. This is so, great, by the way. I'm immediately thinking of ways that this could be used in all sorts of contexts, most notably... I think mm -hmm. like real estate, you know, showing people around houses and where things are or, you know, inside of properties. Yeah, well, or... well th that is our main uh, concept. I mean, uh, we, I mean, I, I was personally related with real estate in the past. Okay. So this is one of those things we got in mind that in real estate, uh, we can make use of a virtual tour in a big way because, uh, you know, I don't like to make visits to watch a house every time. Uh, it, it cost me money. And uh, I mean, it's time consuming. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I think a lot uh, of people make their decision based upon the photos that they right. see on the website. But also if it's got the additional capability, you know, if you can wander from room to room and get a real idea of the space in there and how big things are. Right. But also I can imagine right. like retail shops and things wanting to show what the inside of their store is like and well, just how big there is it is. No and... limitations. Yeah, there's no limitations. I yeah. mean. Uh, we have seen virtual tours being used in you know, universities recently. Right. Uh, people can actually take a tour in there, but they spend tons of money on that. Yes. But now the thing has gotten so much cheaper. Yeah, <laughs> so, yes, yes. Well, yeah. let's say this is a YouTube video. So when we click on share, you get the option for embed. Embed, right. And, and it Steal gives that. you the iframe I uh, data here. So I just copy that and I'll just go to the on-click content, I'll just directly paste it. I don't Got need it. to do anything else with okay. that. And if I preview on it, all right, so the preview is loaded. Now, if I click on it, you can see the video is already there. There it is. That's super cool. Right, so you can actually do the same thing on the on-hover content as well. Like if I put the video uh, in place of on-hover, right, instead of on-click. Yep. So... Let's check out the preview. Uh, now, if I just take the mouse on top, the video is on top. Yes. Right? Yes. So it, this can be done with images, videos, or anything as long as you use the tags in HTML. So Perfect. Yeah. Right. So apart from that, the URL is simply so that you can see a URL there for clicking. So if I put here HTTPS colon slash S, uh, I'm just basically putting my own website here. Okay. So for now, it don't show anything on the hover, but when I click on it, it gives me, takes me to the website directly. Wonderful. Nice option. Yeah. I was going to say if that option wasn't there, it should have been. So that's perfect. Great. Right. So that's the purpose of URL. Now we, were, we will see how we can add multiple scenes because 
the real real idea of virtual tour is that we can move from one place to another. We can't just stay in one place, right? Sorry, so can I just that, interrupt you just quickly there? Um, I noticed right. next to Hotspot One, uh, you scroll mm-hmm. up, scroll up, scroll up a bit. Yes, there's an add button. Does that allow me to add multiple little yeah. uh, hotspots onto the same image? I can add as many as I like, can I? Right. Uh, for premium, you can add as many as you like. For free, we limit it to five hotspots per scene. Okay. So Oops. every scene you get five hotspots. Okay. Got so, it. Yeah. And they just all you just can I can you just add one so that we can see what the UI looks yeah, like? Yeah, sure, just, sure. If uh, I just click on this. Got it. it I see it. I just wanted to see that bit really. So you've got they line up hor- horizontally, and you just click right. on them. Right. Got it. Perfect. Right. Okay. Now there is one thing you might get confused about: that which scene does the hotspot belong to? Because you know, when we have scene one, all the hotspots here are belonging to scene one anyways, ah, right? Yes, I see but, that. But we made it much easier. Like if I click on add, this is scene two, right? Yep. Now the idea is whenever you're in a scene, the hotspots will show the hotspots for that particular scene. Got it. So if I click on scene two, now you see it has a blank hotspot. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's that's only for scene two. So now let's go to scene two and I, I got to add the IDs. Uh, you got to make sure you put in a scene ID. And you see here the setter's default is no because this one I gave it yes. Uh-huh. But any scene, if I just change it to yes, all the other scenes will become no automatically. Okay. So by right. default, you mean that if somebody was to load this with presumably a short code, I can see it on the right-hand side there, mm-hmm. it's going to load the scene that's the default first. It's the first. Got right. it. Got it. Got exactly. It. So now I got scene two, and I'll just upload another image. Let's say this one. So uh, just being sure that this image has to be PNG, JPG, or JPEG. Okay. We don't uh, support any raw image like PSD or something like that. Okay. Th- that's difficult to render. So when I uploaded it, and now if I click on preview, the preview will only show me the default scene first. So when you're editing with this, it's best to you know make that particular scene uh default at the moment okay. so that you can actually get that on the preview and then when you finish right. up correct it get the right one set that as the default got it exactly so now you see the preview is giving me the second scene as the default now how do i create a scene fade render like from one scene to another mm-hmm. so the best way is you see when you go to hotspot you got two options one is info the other one is you can actually change it to scene type so this is the one we use to change the scene you can see the, this thing called targets in ID. So uh, let's say I want this particular hotspot to take me back to the other scene. So I first need to set the pitch and the yaw, as I said, all the time. If I don't do that, it's going to show an error. Okay. We'll wait until you do that. That's understood. Right. I'm sorry. That's all right. Oh, you got that one already. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. So H02. Okay. So target scene ID is required. So when you select a scene type, you must input a target scene ID. Okay. Or else this will not allow you to even check a preview. So yep. uh, for this, this is since this is scene two, I want this to fade to scene one. Got it. So I'll just put the scene ID of scene one. So in case you forget, you can always go back and check the scene ID. There here. it is, yeah. Keep, keep, keep a nice naming structure and should be straightforward, yeah. Yeah, right. So when I put in the target scene ID and preview, you'll see that uh, it has gone up to the place where I put the pitch and yaw, and the icon has changed a bit. Uh-huh. This, becomes, this becomes an arrow. Now, for now, in the preview, when you see I put the mouse on top, it gives me the name of the hotspot. This only views in the preview. When you put it on a page, this thing doesn't come up un- unless you put a on over content. Okay. So this is to help you out to make it easier, right? So let's say this is the second scene. It's going to take me to the first scene, right? Mm-hmm. So I click on it, and it takes me to the. And second that's scene. your one second, your hundred milliseconds, thousand millisecond fade that you right. had earlier, right? So let, let me just change it to a little bit more so that you understand how this works, All right? So when I changed it to three thousand, that's three second fade, right? Mm-hmm. So when I click on it, it's going to fade slowly in three nice. seconds. Nice. Right? So that's how it works. So every scene, you can add uh, hotspots on it separately, no problem. You can have uh, five, five for the free version and uh, more than that, unlimited for the premium version. Mm-hmm. So uh, the scene, scenes are also limited for pre- free version. You get five scenes. 
So we limited everything into five, right? Okay. Okay. So yeah. So when you go to the premium one, uh, you get to get unlimited scenes. That's what most people will need because uh, you know in a real estate site you have uh, hundreds of properties. Yeah. So you will need multiple scenes and hotspots. So yeah, that's basically it. Now once this thing is done, so I, I have set up this uh, small virtual tour. The next thing to do is you know click on publish. If you don't publish. You cannot use the short code. Okay. It's still not going to work, right? Mm -hmm. So I click on publish and, uh, okay, I think I missed the hotspot title in someone. Just give me one second. Yeah, I added a hotspot. I didn't input a title. So we have this uh, error fixing messages every time you okay. miss something. Yep, yep, helpful. So it helps you out. Right. So now if I click on publish, it will be published. So... Yeah. Now, when the publish change to update, you know it's published. Uh -huh. So now under the WP VR option, if you go to tools, it will give you a list of all the tools we created. So uh, your name was, uh, I gave the title as Nathan. Yep. Now this tour is right here, right? Yep. So now uh, I'll also show you how to embed this on both types of websites, whether it's a classic editor or a Gutenberg. So if I go and add new post here, right? Mm-hmm. Now, the idea is you will need two tabs anyways because you'll need to collect the ID. So first of all, for a classic editor, uh, give me one second, let that load. You just need to copy this short code. Got it. And paste it anywhere you want it to be. Yeah. So you can uh, then preview it or publish it. It will be there. So there you go. There it is. It's already on my page, right? So... Uh, you can actually add width or height here to edit the width. Oh, good to know. Good to know. Got some parameters. Yeah. Width to 200 and so on. Yeah, yeah. All right. Let's go to, let's say, three. Uh, the idea is if, even if you add width or height, you need to make sure you add this PX because yep. without that, it's not going to work out. So if I give them preview again. Now you see it became smaller. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Change height in the width. All right, so that's for the classic editor. Now, uh, uh, let me just sw switch off my classic editor to show you on Gutenberg. Just give me a second. No, it's all right. We're all going through this at the minute, aren't we? <laughs> switching it on, <laughs> trying things, switching it off. Right, so classic editor is off. Now Gutenberg okay. is the default editor, so we must get integrated with that. Yes, so yes, if I, yes. Now I add new. Now, the thing about Gutenberg is this is much easier now because the block editor gives you everything. So when I have WPVR, you know, whenever I add a block, I have a block created for WPVR yes. separate. Right. Right. So it's under the common blocks in case you don't have it in most used. So when I do that, it creates a block. Now, keep in mind, we cannot edit it here. You need to edit from the toolbars. Yeah. Right? Uh, yeah. So on the toolbar, uh, in case you have settings off, click on setting, go to block. Yep. Now here is the ID you need to put in that you generated when you created the tour. So you can take it from the short code or when you are creating the tour, below yep. that you'll have the ID there. So I'm just copying the ID and taking it here. And the width is given by default 600 and 400. I can change that over here. Anything you put, it'll just alter it. Yeah, see that? That's looking good. Right. right. So now if I just preview, it will load my page with the... Uh, Tour. So there is no limitations. The best thing is if you actually put a 360 panorama, you can actually have an actual 360 view of the place. That's amazing. And yeah. So and uh, you can also use it in a more complicated way in case you want, like in this road, you want to move a little bit forward. Then you just have to take a panorama from a little bit forward and put it in. Yes. So in that way, you can actually make it a complete walkthrough tour if you want. Yep. Yep. So, yep. yeah, well, I think so, if you've ever used sort of like street view, you'll get the impression of what that's like, you know, sort of fade in, yeah. instead of it sort of pretending to slide forward like it does, it will okay. um, it will just fade forward. But perfect for like real estate or, you know, I'm just thinking if you if, if you ran some 
kind of event or if you had a, a, a place like a, I don't know, like if you're a owner of a theme park or something like that and you want to demonstrate all your attractions and what it's like, this would be absolutely perfect. That's trivially mm-hmm. easy to do, really easy. Right. The only the only thing I'd ask is I, I'm sure that a lot of us have experimented with taking these kind of photos before. Mm-hmm. Um, I I used to do a lot of this stuff on my old mobile phone because I used to have the the Google camera um, on mm-hmm. my Android phone and the Google camera, right. um, you might just want to remove my face uh, from there. <laughs> just minimize <laughs> Skype, maybe. Um, oh, the yeah. That's perfect. Yeah, nobody wants to see that. <laughs> the um, the That worked really well. But with my new phone, I, mm-hmm. I haven't, it, it won't allow me to download that app. So I'm wondering, have you got any advice for good apps, either on iOS or on Android, that will enable us to take these these stitched together 360 degree, I think Google call it Photosphere. Right. Uh, I don't know. I personally use Photosphere. That's the one we suggest ourselves. Okay. And other than that, uh, to be honest, if you are actually a real estate agent or maybe you, if you own a hotel, you have, you can actually afford a 360 degree camera. Yes. So that gives the a better angle of everything and better quality because uh, if you use the Photosphere, it's still limited. It's not... Uh, as high as using an actual camera. Yes. So it's best that if you have a lot of properties or if you are owning a hotel and you want, you know, a lot of people are coming in. So if you want to make money, it's better to spend some. Yeah. So you can actually uh, buy a good quality camera and use a tripod to create a proper 360 uh, image. And that's kind of make it more quality in this one. Because yes. in this one, you see, uh, since this is an edited one, you can see some lines over here that makes it blurry. Uh, if you had an actual uh, camera that takes 360 images or 4K images, that will actually allow you to uh, make this a perfect tour. Yes. Basically. Yeah, I know what you mean. I've seen them before, and it's remarkable. They sort and, of they remove well, themselves, don't they? They they kind of right, remove the right. tripod from the image somehow. Can't even see right. what it's standing on. It's remarkable. Exactly. That is uh, and, inspired. Sorry, it sounds like you've got something else you want to add. Yeah. Uh, basically, the reason why we don't focus on the app is because you see. Uh, if you want to make an actual tour from uh, big companies, you got to pay a lot of money. Mm. So, <coughs> sorry about that. Uh, you got to pay a lot of money. So we thought that if we, if this can reduce the cost of that, then I don't think uh, you know buying a camera for a little bit money is gonna be much of a hassle. Because uh, if you really had a virtual tour in mind, you'd think about you know at least five hundred dollars. And uh, for big places like you know a theme park, they would require thousands of dollars. Yes. In fact. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely but, right. Yeah, and also to to some extent, it's the kind of thing that you would hand off to a a professional, um, perhaps right. you know, who would provide you with the images, and you as the website builder would would then integrate this. That plugin, it, trivially easy to use. I'm sure we can all come up with a, a bunch of clients who might have benefited from this in the past. Mm-hmm. Where can we um, Where can we find you or your website? You might just want to put those on the screen for us to see, so that we can see the. The free version and the pro version uh, as well? Well, uh, honestly speaking, you can get the free version from the WordPress repo. So you can just go to wordpress.org. And uh, you you just need to search it by WPVR. And you'll find many plugins that claim that they can do the same thing. But, um, you know, uh, it's been hard to find plugins that do exactly the same thing as this one to be honest well that's looking good to me let's have a look see what we've got there it is that's so, the one so that's the logo so, you're looking for wpv right in like a, in right. like a VR so, headset when you click it it takes you over here you can use the documentation whenever you need and uh, if you want to get the premium one or you can also get the free one from you know our own website mm-hmm. rextheme.com wpvr 360 panorama now nobody's gonna write that whole uh what should I say, the URL there. So we, you can actually just go to rextheme.com and uh, when you get into the homepage of our website, you directly see it says products. Ah, got it. And there you, go. you can just choose WPVR and it will take you to the website easily. Okay. And here you can have the option to download the free one or you can just upgrade to Pro if you have the free one already. Right, so you can just scroll down to the website and learn more details about it. We do have options for the premium one if you uh, want to check them out. Mm-hmm. So it's it's pretty cheap if you can if you ask me, because uh, we we are just doing it for our you know contribution purpose, 
And uh, it's because it, we had a hassle before using similar plugins or maybe use, trying to get similar services. So we don't really want to charge a whole lot of money. The thing that we presented here is completely so that it pays for our developers. That's yeah. all. Yeah. All right, so that's it, the idea. It looks great, really, really great. Um, is there any um, like email address or Twitter handle that you want to mention in case people are interested in this and want to speak to you directly? Well, uh, if you want, uh, you can contact me directly on my Twitter. That's Twitter. Uh, my ID is Sultan Royal One. So that's where you actually uh, get in touch with me. Okay. And you can also contact me on LinkedIn. You you will find me by my full name, Chokdar Shakhar Sultan. Okay. Uh, so you can get me there and if you want email support you can always reach me at sultan at rextheme.com so that's a dedicated email for any products we have in rex theme and specifically for this plugin as well so Great. you can also get reach me with that perfect thank you so much for coming on to our wp builds contribute really cool really interesting something entirely new to me um i hope you guys have enjoyed it and yeah reach out uh, reach out if you've got any questions thank you so much for coming on today i really appreciate it bye bye